are they? History has been made <laughs> as India successfully lands a spacecraft on the moon's surface. Mission accomplished. But India's space research organisation cheers as it joins an exclusive club, one of only four nations to conquer the moon by spacecraft. India is on the moon. But the only one to land on the dark side of the moon. Celebrations across the nation, even the men's cricket team joining in. Waving the country's flag, Prime Minister Narendra Modi describes it as a victory cry of New India. This success belongs to all of humanity and it will help moon missions by other countries in the future. Chandrayaan 3, meaning mooncraft, began its slow journey in July, launching from the country's south. Already it's sending back images and will spend two weeks observing and gathering information about the moon's crust. Scientists believe frozen water and precious elements might be found, which could be used for supplies for a moon colony and deep space exploration. Coming just days after a Russian ship crashed while trying to land on the moon, this heralds India's emergence as a major player in space. Mr Modi says India's next target, putting people on the moon. The sky is no longer the limit. Well, let's bring in astrophysicist Brad Tucker from Canberra. Good morning to you, Brad. Hello, Brad. Um, why is India so keen to join the space race? A few different reasons. It shows that you technologically are able to do it in that elite club of, of having um, enough expertise and know-how. And the moon is always seen as one of these hardest goals to accomplish, and it rightfully is. But also to further their own ambitions okay, in space as well. There's a lot of effort of going not just back to the moon, but staying there for longer term goals. And then using broader space technology on Earth, and we've seen this time and time again. So there's a little bit of national pride, there's a little bit of development in-house with their own country, and to show the other space powers, really the US, Russia, and China, that they essentially can do the same that those other countries can and are equals to them. And I think, as we saw last night, that is now true. It's also a sure sign that you've got cash to burn, um, and in India's got plenty of it. They, they have arrived. They have arrived, and, and you know, India's Chandrayaan 2 mission, the previous one, it had a failed landing back in September 2019, like the Russian one earlier this week. But that didn't stop them. They rebuilt the entire thing in only three and a half years, and they only spent $70 million. Now, that's still a, a good sum of money, but, you know, when we look at the Apollo program, which cost $180 billion U.S. dollars, and in fact, I mean, even the movie Gravity, uh, like a decade ago with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, that cost $120 million to make. So they were able to go to the moon for less money than making Jeez. a movie about going into space and nail it. So, look, you know, it's a huge achievement and they should be proud and the entire community is for them. And, and uh, Brad, is anyone calling it an Indian Vindaluna or, yeah. or just Carl? Oh, that's good, Jack. Uh, look, I mean, Carl's a bit of a special case, and I think that's probably uh, a good way of describing it. But it is a spicy treat for the world that they land. Hey, bravo, bravo. Thanks, well done. Brad. They are marching forward, are they not? Good on you, mate. Thank you so much. Hey there, today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?